Hi there, gorgeous. The goal I always have for my closet is to fill it with pieces I'm excited to use and wear every single day and last for at least five years time. And throughout the course of my journey, I've realized I've been making some pretty big shopping mistakes that was really impacting my overall style. And it was also creating a lot of waste within my wardrobe. I felt like there was a lot of clothes that I would buy and be excited about at the moment, but then over a year or two, I would be throwing away. It sounds counterintuitive, but the biggest shopping mistake that I realized I was making is building my wardrobe around singular pieces that I thought looked amazing on me. And the problem with that is that even though individually each piece may make you look and feel amazing, you're not really thinking about the cohesiveness of this item with all the other pieces that you have in your wardrobe. Having a well-coordinated wardrobe means that you can have fewer pieces, but actually enjoy your closet more because it's filled with quality pieces that you can easily mix and match and have fun styling. And ultimately, if you don't think about things like versatility and how the item fits your lifestyle and purely only base it on aesthetics and looks, no matter how much you love it at the beginning, you're going to stop using it after a while. For me, my goal is to be able to open up my closet and easily pick out what I wanna wear for whatever occasion I feel like without feeling like I'm limited in terms of variety. And even though social media has made it incredibly desirable to have this beautiful, fancy, large closet filled with clothes and expenses purses, the problem is when you sacrifice quality for a larger variety of items in your closet is that you'll only end up gravitating towards a couple things anyways, because you'll always have preferences. Realistically, you're not gonna be able to use everything in that closet. And ultimately, the way I see is it's just cash sitting there in these pieces that you never actually use and you can actually sell the item use this cash towards other places in your life that might be more effective like buying a home or putting more money into one piece that you're going to use all the time and ultimately when you develop the skills to curate a wardrobe that you absolutely love to use every single piece of you're not going to actually need a giant closet in your home to be happy. Buying things to just fill a need, like just buying a black t-shirt or white t-shirt basic, just because you're told to, is something that you're going to ultimately regret. Number one, everyone's basics are different. It may not be a t-shirt, it may be a tank top, it may not be jeans, it might be linen pants. It fully depends on you and your lifestyle and what you're going to feel most comfortable and get the most use out of. So what I love to do is I like to regularly assess my closet and only put on my bed the things that I absolutely love to wear. And you'll realize a trend after a couple times you do this of what kind of pieces are your essential pieces or you'll realize what exactly is missing. And the other problem with buying a basic just because you feel like you need to have it in your closet is that you're going to settle for something that's just okay. You're gonna buy a regular black t-shirt or white t-shirt. You're going to realize you're not gonna wear it as much because you don't feel super confident or in love with the piece. So my rule of thumb in the way I fix that is I never buy a basic item without knowing, first of all, do I love it? And if the answer is, I like it, I don't love it, I won't buy it. No, it needs to have some sort of uniqueness about the piece. Maybe it's the cut or the shape or the material is incredibly soft. And I find this trick has really helped me pick pieces that I absolutely love to wear, even when it comes to something as simple as a plain t-shirt. I used to try and save money by buying poor quality pieces of clothing and investing only in my accessories. And the problem with that is that you'll find those clothing pieces don't really last. People can really visually see the difference between good quality pieces and well-constructed pieces and poor quality clothes. And if you're trying to go for more of an elevated, stylish look, each piece matters whether it is clothing or accessories. Not only do poor quality pieces of clothing break down over time much easier, and end up having holes or wear and tear issues, but things like the color will fade easier. But if you invest in natural fibers, such as linen or silk pieces, they last far longer wear and tear wise, and also will be a longer staple in your wardrobe. 
So if you focus on curating a smaller but higher quality wardrobe that match your accessories, you'll find that you need to shop far less often and your entire look will look far more put together. When you go shopping and you buy an item that looks amazing on you but is not the most comfortable, don't buy it. Because I've learned over time that no matter how good something looks on you, if it's not comfortable to wear throughout the day, you're not going to constantly reach for it. And ultimately you're going to use it so much less than you thought you would. So why spend money on that specific piece that's not comfortable and invest more time into looking for something similar that has everything you're looking for in terms of comfortability and functionality. My rule of thumb when it comes to comfort is if it takes me more than five seconds to get into something, I'm not going to buy it because I'm just not going to reach for it. I'm not the kind of person that likes to take hours to get ready. I like to keep it quick and short easy to style and out the door. If something looks and feels comfortable and luxurious, you're gonna to wanna to continue to wear it over and over again, and you won't actually regret purchasing it. Growing up, you're often pushed into buying items for specific events like prom, going to weddings, and other different events. But what I found is that buying items for specific events put a chunk of your money into items that you only use once or twice a year or even longer. So what I focus on now, even when it comes to buying wedding guest dresses, etc., those items need to be versatile enough so I feel comfortable wearing the same dress, let's say to a brunch with my friends, or be able to change up that dress so I can wear it to a date night with, with my husband. You can buy two-piece outfits, sometimes a gorgeous suit, or matching separates like a top and a skirt can be far more versatile so that you can use each piece separately in your regular everyday wardrobe. Buying items that don't fit my style and personality is one big shopping mistake that I still find hard to overcome because sometimes I like trying out new styles knowing that it's not really me. Style is really about self-discovery and knowing yourself better, knowing what you like. The way I know certain things are not my style or my personality is that I first come up with three words that describe my style. My style is elegant, sexy, and street. For example, I always avoid things with frills or fringes on them. I don't like excessive fabric. I think it detracts from the overall silhouette. I like investing in neutrals, though sometimes a pop of color if it's a seasonal piece. It's super important that when it comes to purchasing your next item, you have a good idea of what your three key words are that describe your style, as well as an understanding, a basic understanding of what materials and colors that you like or are looking for. That leads me up to my next point, which is don't buy impulse purchases. You should already have in your mind a list of items that you need based on clearing out your closet regularly, because what it does is it helps you understand your own inventory. Impulse purchases gets you to buy things that you really don't actually need as part of your closet, won't use as much, or duplicating something you technically already have, like another pair of black pants, which, I've definitely done before. <laughs> the other thing is do not, and I repeat, do not buy items that are out of your budget. Quality pieces that look good on you can be found at every single price range. Do not jeopardize your own financial health for trying to copy what other people have. You see people on Instagram with fancy cars, fancy lifestyles and homes, but you don't know their specific financial situation. Maybe they're borrowing that car, leasing that car, maybe they didn't buy it. And maybe they're significantly in debt, but you can't tell because it's just a picture or a snapshot of their life. So don't place yourself under undue pressure just to try and live a lifestyle that people aspire to. And don't let outside pressure make you buy things you wouldn't necessarily buy within your own budget. When you put together your budget, make sure it covers all your critical expenses first and put aside money into savings first before you start saving for that bag or that item that you're really excited about buying that's more expensive so that you know in case of any kind of emergency you have a backup of amount of emergency money that can cover your needs and you're not stressed out because you spent all this money on luxury goods that you now have to try and sell. The thing with luxury goods like Chanel purses and more expensive bags is that it takes time for it to appreciate. Just because you buy it now doesn't mean that you can sell it a year later and you're going to make money off of it. It takes time for it to appreciate sometimes five years, sometimes 10 years. So when you're in a tight cash crunch, selling that bag means that you're gonna actually end up losing money on it. 
And speaking of budget, there are tons of ways that you can elevate your style without actually having to spend any money at all. And you'll be able to learn how I do that in the next video.